Hey everyone, this is Sean Yurt Curran. You've heard me on WYAB on the radio, and you can also catch me on the new Hulu series, Death in the Dorm, Season 2. I just wanted to introduce you all to my law firm, the Yurt Curran Law Firm. I'm located over in Fondren on Mill Street in Jackson, Mississippi. I've got over 18 years of law practice under my belt, including a decade as a felony prosecutor in Hines County and at the Mississippi Attorney General's office. I spent all those years putting bad guys away. Now let me help keep you out. You can call me anytime at 601-906-909 for a consultation or just if you want to talk about something about your case. I'm committed to helping you navigate the complexities of the legal system, which I know can be difficult and confusing and downright scary at times. Let me help you use my experience to explain the system to you and how it works and how I can best help you. You can call me again at 601-906-9094 to discuss any of this and any of your worries. Trust me to handle your defense where it is going to be my priority and your future will be my focus. Boom, a shaka a boom. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio and the number one morning time talk show here in all of central Mississippi. Number one in your hearts. I don't know about the charts. Anyway, live on 103.9 FM, WYAB. Streaming worldwide at WYAB.com as well as the TuneIn app. And Alexa, just search WYAB. And as always, if you miss any of this show, you can go to any podcast streaming platform out there. Uh, iTunes, Apple, I know the same thing. Apple, they changed the name of it. Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, you name it. it. It's on all of them. Just search Clay Edwards Show. We've had a huge couple of weeks in downloads, so I do appreciate everybody uh, going and finding it there. That is, you know, gives me feedback uh, of what the interest level of this thing is. And I uh, just meet more and more and more people. You guys are insane. Love y'all. Let's see here. Guns and Gear text line 7692411944. If you're not, if you have an X account, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I guess forever it would just be called X, also or formerly known as Twitter. That's the full name of it now. My handle over there is at SaveJXN. At SaveJXN. If you want to communicate during the show uh, and you don't want to feel like doing the text line, whatever. <clears throat> also, phone line this morning, 601-879-0002. If I sound a little weird because I've got a different set of headphones on and they're not quite as uh, noise canceling as the last ones so i'm probably overcompensating for not being able to hear quite as well so just fyi let's see here we got a text early on the guns and gear text line somebody sent in looks like uh apparently there's a building being demolished over by the metro center well there's oh yeah the old kmart building they're tearing down the old kmart building over by the Metro Center. I saw that the other day. Somebody sent me a picture. Gosh, used to, I would have cared so much about that. Like, oh man, I got to get pictures of it. No, I just don't care anymore. I don't, I, I just do not care. You know, 30 years too late. Now, t- now do the Metro Center. Now do the Metro Center. Let's jump in on something here. Again, Guns and Gear text line 769 241 1944, the phone line. 601-879-0002. I got a, uh, I shared this on my Facebook yesterday. We're going to get hyper local here. Let me log into my Facebook real quick. Every now and then, live radio. <laughs> Had to remember what email address I use. Hey, this afternoon, I'm bringing back my video podcast, long, sit down, long form interview, Joe, uh, not Joe Biden, Joe Rogan style. And I've got a guest that I know my WYAB fans are going to like. It will not be streamed live. I'm going to upload it to platforms after I record it. And I think it's going to be something you guys find interesting. I'm going to try to do the scheduling permitting. We're going to do these once a week. But that last interview I did over there where we sat down on the couches and recorded it with the with the fellow squirrel that interviewed me, it did so well. I was like, man, maybe we can bring these back. But 
I'll be the uh, interviewer or the conversationist. So follow me on all my social media platforms at Save JXN, except Rumble. It's at Clay Edwards Show. All right, so <clears throat> there's an angry parent out at Byron Middle School. And at first, I didn't really understand quite what the fuss was, but I shared it. And, you know, just kind of gave my little, gave a little caption, my little quick thought. I was in the car wash, going through the car wash, and was literally texting it in that short time before I ejected out of the car wash and actually had to put my hands on the wheel again. There's uh, I, no point saying their name. I don't know if they want their name mentioned on the radio, but it, it, here's the caption. And then I'm going to read the email from the school. Uh, she says, figured I would bring this to everyone's attention. Whose child attends Brandon Middle School? My daughter was dress coded today because her sweatshirt said, stay sober. Apparently they can't wear clothes that promote staying sober and can't wear clothes. I'm sorry, that they can't wear clothes that promote staying sober. The principal told her it would, quote, start conversations. She says, so I guess they should cancel Red Ribbon Week as well. That makes no sense to me. The more I've had time to think about this, the more I've had time to really think about it. But here's the email from the school. It says, I was in, I was in the hall and a staff member brought the sweatshirt to my attention. If I remember correctly, it stated, stay sober on the front and also again on the back in two hearts. I also believe that one of the hearts also stated something else. I never stated it was wrong or unwanted conversation. We do take part in multiple ways during the school year and week and training. Co- fo- blah, 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 blah. They do training focusing on uh, positive decisions. She goes, I, I walked up to the student counselor's office to allow her to pick. I, I walked the student to the counselor's office to allow her to pick out another shirt, another sweatshirt from the clothing closet. I explained that she was not in trouble, but the sweatshirt could be a, dis- a disruption to the learning environment, and asked that she pick out another shirt. I did also bring up the example of another slogans for a breast cancer or virginity, and they also could be a distraction for students in middle school. I do apologize that I that for that I did not call you yesterday, but there was not a write up or anything intended to be punitive. Please let me know if you would like for me to call this morning to discuss further. Uh, one of the principals, I guess, over there. <clears throat> you know, my initial reaction was maybe middle middle school. Was that uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade? Maybe that's a little too early to be having the sober conversation. That was just my initial lifetime, top of my head reaction. I said, but I'm guessing they are also hearing the "let's get let's get drunk and party" message too as well as just anything else they could possibly be seeing on social media. You know, Dylan Mulvaney's biggest audience is young kids. And he's preaching about, uh, uh, he's a man, preaching about his day, his one year as a, as a woman. You know, he, he's a fake transvestite. Well, he's a transvestite. He's not a woman. <laughs> so I guess that would be the same thing. Um, but that, that's the kind of stuff kids are seeing now. And I'm not hundred percent sure what red ribbon, red ribbon, ribbon, ribbon week is my, I, I assume that is like a drug prevention month of some sort. You know, we had dare and then I got to thinking, you know, we had dare and all of that. And I know they still have dare. I see the dare cars rolling around. I bet you if that shirt said black lives matter. It would have been beyond acceptable. She wouldn't have had the audacity to make a child change that shirt. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't have had the audacity. I I I got a buddy of mine that I went to church with. His kid was at a school down in Rankin County and had on a basically like a Jesus loves you. And I can't for the sake of remembering exactly what it was. It was something. As benign as that, Jesus loves you. And they made the kid go home and uh, change clothes, basically dress coded that kid as well. So I'm just curious. What do y'all think? 
with all the stuff coming at kids, is stay sober really that bad? And I went to my comments and was just reading some of the comments and, you know, some of the parents talking about Red Ribbon Week and saying, you know, now because of Red Ribbon Week, they've actually had to explain to their to uh, their five, six-year-old what exactly drugs were. And apparently during Red Ribbon Week, they tell kids that cigarettes are, the dr- are drugs or something to that extent. She says, so now this, this woman said now <clears throat> she had to spend two years or two weeks, one or the other, explaining that cigarettes weren't drugs because the mom smoked. And your opinions on smoking or not, <clears throat> I'm not a fan of it, but teach their own. I do things people don't like. Uh, cigarettes, kids should not be being told that cigarettes are the same thing as drugs. You know, you don't know whose kid smokes. There's no point in putting that in a five-year-old's head. Um, so now here, here's a um, here's a, les- a message from a, a lady that's an, that is an educator. Most everybody agreed on this too that the school was out of line. You know, telling a kid you can't have a stay sober shirt. There's a lot of other examples of ridiculousness as well. But I like this lady's, as an educator, I really liked her comment. And y'all can go read all these comments on my Facebook page. Just uh, search this the one that's facebook.com slash save Jackson. says, as an educator, I know Red Ribbon Week starts in elementary school, so it certainly is happening in middle school. That's the entire premise for the D.A.R.E. program, as we can educate children about the dangers of drugs without being too graphic or overly informative. It's never too early to have age-appropriate conversations about staying healthy and putting good things into our bodies. And the longer I've had this to set in, the more appalled I am that, that there's a problem with having a positive message. It could create conversation. We got to get back to some common sense is what we need to do. We got to get back to common sense. Stay sober. Look, I'm a guy that don't always stay sober. I like to have a drink. Stay sober should just be a universally good thing. That should not be offensive to anybody. If you see stay sober and you're offended, you may need to get a little help. It could create conversation. Ain't that what we're... See, that's the problem. Right there. We ain't allowing people to have conversations anymore. They have to get on the internet and pick a side. And everything goes from the ability to have a conversation to having to be an argument. Either you're sober or you're destroyed. Now you got to pick a side. Where most of us live somewhere in the middle. But because we're not having a conversation amongst ourselves, that 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 makes me madder than anything. Just think just thinking about that right there. It may create a conversation as if creating a conversation is a bad thing. You know, for I'll, I'll reference Black Lives Matter again. Because I know it was a big fuss about people being able to wear Black Lives Matter stuff, but you can't wear MAGA stuff. You know, we got to create conversation. That was how they sold that. You know, you you white people need to understand. But anything else at night. Now, look, they may not, all in fault, for all, all fairness here. They may not allow Black Lives Matter shirts there either. But something tells me if a kid showed up with one today, we wouldn't be having the same conversation. Should read a few text messages. I tell you what, we'll read some texts on the other side of the break. We'd love to hear from y'all. 601 879 2 Fair or foul? Should the kid have had to change shirts from stay sober to nothing, I guess. 
Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. We'll be right back on The Clay Edwards Show. My headphones have gotten tangled up in my chair here. I'm not having luck with headphones today. Let's uh try this one more time. We got a call here. Hey, caller, you're on there. Can you hear me, Clay? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I, this is sort of, it's on the same thing, but it's a little off the subject. But it's something I like to look into. I've, I've heard a couple of times on conservative radio stations, different people saying they're using I and A to rewrite American history. And they change the stuff up. And then they're going to come out, the kids won't even know history anymore. We should be saving, we should be saving old history books and stuff. For the truth, uh, because you go on the internet, it probably tells you not the truth. Well, it's like it's like it's like, it's like changing a quality to equity. Mm-hmm. They, they, they did okay. that. They did that a few years ago. They changed the quality to equity, thinking nobody would listen, but nobody was paying attention. And clearly, those are two different words. They're, they're, yes, they're, sir. They're they're slowly rewriting history and changing meanings of words right in front of our very eyes. They also do in the Bible that way too. Thirty two verses, I think, kind of Bible story tell me they changed up. Interesting. Wasn't aware of that. <laughs> the, the Bible store over uh, in front of Walmart, that's where the that's where the lady showed me all that stuff. Well, that's disappointing. So we'll look into that. What do you what do you think about this uh what do you think about this shirt? Should the kid be able to wear the stay sober shirt? I I don't I don't I can't really say because my, my my granddaughter come through Brandon about two or three years ago, she never they, they never I don't think they question anything and they had it in there a then or not. So I don't really I I, it's, I think it should be all right. But why don't they just go to uniforms? They're gonna do that, ain't that right? And that way you don't have to worry about all that. Hey, look, I so hate much. I hate the uniform, but I agree. If um if, if they're gonna go to this extreme, just oh, okay, everybody wear a uniform. Call it a day. I agree. We I don't know what to say. Look, we, we got to keep an eye. But I don't really know. We don't know what goes on in the school system and the board, the, the Rain County School Board. They meet early in the morning. Yes, they so, do. You right, know, right at they meet, they they meet about the same time you're supposed to be dropping your kids off at school. They they make it very hard for you to get out there and have a conversation. Conversation, and, and we don't know what goes on. And they still, you, you, I found a lot of people talk about in Madison. They, they try to get rid of that stuff, and the books are still in the library. So I don't know the answer. And I don't. I, the parents got to get involved, and we got to elect one. One very it's two very important uh, officers. Nobody pays attention to the school board and the electric committee, and we don't never pay attention to it. And them. Them are the, the, the two most key people we vote for to know who's in there doing that. We should know who our school board member is, our electric committee, and how they're doing. Well, they. I, I, I will tell you this. We we did wake up to that this year. A lot of people did, and unfortunately, still not enough based on some of the the way some of the races went in Rankin and Hines County. I mean, Rankin and Madison County. Hines are they're appointed in Hines. I found out the other day they're not elected. So, but I don't know. I, Hines a lost call. I mean, here. JPS not Hines. I'm sorry, it's a lost call. So it's kind of a moot yeah. point. Well, we just, I don't know, we just pray and keep going and hope for the best because the rank kind of schools are good schools. So, all the all, all different things. And I, I noticed my granddaughter's academic, I mean, or the history and stuff is pretty well on point. So, yep. I don't I don't know if they changed that or not. We got some good people. I met some of the people over here that, that, that talk over the history and the department. One of them, and uh, he, he's pretty sharp. He believes in America, so I, I don't know. And, and people over that too. See, they got they, they got so many principles now. They got they got, and they got principles over this over the history and over the other stuff too. But appointed, not appointed. That this is their job. And, 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 and it'll be interesting to see how the school systems were set up now because they totally set up with all these principles. And I don't really know a lot about it to be honest with you. Uh, appreciate the call this morning, brother. Have a good day. You too, thanks. It's almost as if phone line 601-879-0002. I apologize for uh, coming back on the air like such a train wreck there. The um, 
the cord got caught under the wheel of the um, chair here. Look, these they call it the school to prison pipeline for a reason. They run these things like prisons. It's their way or no way. It's a bunch of Marxism, even in Mississippi. Because it comes down from the federal government. You know, <clears throat> it's almost like with the stay sober thing. This, this is an in particular thing for me, and it really grinds my gears. So, well, somebody's kid, I mean, one of these kids, one of their parents might not be sober, so it may be triggering to them to see stay sober. Life should trigger you. You should get triggered regularly and often early as a child. It should always, life should just be an all-out assault on your senses. So by the time you're an adult, you don't need a damn cry closet. Every time you see or read something that offends you. Good Lord. Let's read some of the text on the Gunzinger text line. You guys got them pouring in this morning. Thank y'all. Well, you know what? Phone calls go to the front of the line. Hey, brother, you on there? Clay, I got an idea that will take care of all the problems for all the counties and help a bunch of others. And this is everywhere, not just in Mississippi. What? The money that comes in from them counties, but say 82 counties in Mississippi, say the budget's going to be $100 million for the state. Let them split that up 82 ways, okay? And the people that bring in industry and bring in, uh, and bring in, you know, shopping centers and stuff like that, they get to keep their money. The ones that don't, that's going to be their damn problem. Yeah. That way people will have their, uh, Officials held accountable. Well, yeah, I, we, there's got to be some accountability. We can't keep sending people down there. Of course, we're always going to. We're just preaching to the. We're, we're, we're well, just t- take a hot dog down the hallway. I guarantee you, half their, over half, maybe 70% of their budget is federal grants and uh, and state grants. And I guarantee you, if you go to the coast counties, I get, man, they don't hardly get anything from the state, man. I mean, they probably put more money in than anybody. Yeah, I'm not sure. Look it up. I mean, I'm sure there's a way, the accountability office, I'm sure, can, I would like that, but I'm saying, though, if you, the, you keep your money local, let, let the county split up the budget for the services that they get, and then they can keep the other one, and then the rest of it, they don't have to give nothing to the state. That would make it so much easier. If they want to recruit an Amazon, let them go get $10 billion in bonds to build it or something like that, like Madison did. I'm just saying, though, there's too many welfare counties in Mississippi. Oh, well, there's 82 counties, half, yeah, of, more, 82, more, more than half, or more than ha- two thirds of welfare counties. I don't think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, outside of a, uh, outside of Rankin, Madison, a couple up north, Mississippi, Golden Triangle, and uh, you know what, Harrison and uh, uh, the, ha- the uh, Forest, they have, Harrison. They, if they got, to, if they got to keep the money that they. Bring in from the casinos and tourism, they'd have streets of gold. Well, I, I, it's just like the BP money. They put that in state coffer and split it up between everybody else to give them to the three counties down down there. That wasn't right. But anyway, hey, you have a good day, bud. Appreciate it, brother. I thought we were talking about school stuff. Um, But, yeah, you know, he's right. He's right. You, you, you should have to earn to survive. Life, it's like a sale. Life is like a sales job. Yeah. If you produce... You enjoy more. If you don't, you do what the producers tell you to do. You don't pout and put your hand out and want more. Let's see here. Unknown texture on the Guns and Gear text line. I was just scrolling Facebook while listening to the show and seeing your post about the new tags. Yeah, we're going to get to the tags in a minute. We're going to get to the tags in a minute. Uh, they've taken in God we trust off our car tags, if y'all hadn't noticed. Jerry, on the Guns of Gear text line, they might have should have asked if the if the sweatshirt was part of her 12-step program. Step 11, minister to other drunks. What, a, what better place than the teacher's lounge? Or perhaps it's a message to politicians in that area. <laughs> Unknown texture. Oh, it's Lightning from Lightning. I got to add your name, Lightning. Lightning puts, puts his name in all of his text messages, so I get spoiled and I, I don't add his name to the phone list. 
Whiten says, absolutely not the right decision by Brandon Middle School. They should be ashamed of themselves. Whoever made that decision should be fired. Stay sober should be a great thing for conversation. I mean, look, man, uh, I think Lindsey Beckham texted in a second ago. I, I saw it come in. I didn't click on it, but it was talking about the, I remember your, the, your, this is your brain on drugs, the whole Nancy Reagan frying the egg. I didn't know Lindsey was that old thing. And, and it's true. I mean, they, they, they forced this on us as kids. I remember the first time I smoked marijuana. No, it didn't stop me. <laughs> it didn't stop me from trying. But I remember the first time I smoked marijuana, I thought this could be it. I may could die right now. I just might have brain on drugs. <laughs> you know, I'm, point being, I mean, it, they, they went so hard on that drug awareness stuff in the 80s that I literally thought if I smoked weed, I was going to die. And I tell you all all the time, like, weed was a a stepping stone drug for me, a gateway drug. Not because I smoked it and I thought, mmm, I'm suddenly craving some cocaine. No, it made me realize that they had lied about the potency. (laughs) And that, in fact, oh man, I actually kind of like the way this feels. I didn't die. Let me try that other thing they must have lied about too. They didn't lie about that one, by the way. They did not lie about everything past that. Let's take a break, come back. I'm going to stay on this topic for the better part of the hour, but I do want to get to, we're going to get a lot into the State of the Union tonight. Hour two is going to be jam-packed with national political stuff. But I also want to talk about them taking, in God we trust, off our car tags. They made such a big deal about it when they put it on, like, pat us on the back, we put in God we trust. We showed them Mississippi's not China. And this poof, it disappeared. I guess Amazon didn't like it. We'll be right back. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, I want to welcome Eye Gear Optical. Bruce and his team right over there on Highway 80 in Pearl. I've been hearing him on the station for a long time. I uh, was honored when I found out Bruce wanted to come on the Clay Edwards Show and uh, let us advertise his great business to our great audience. Uh, love dealing with locally owned folks. Love dealing with the business owner. You know, no middle man. I don't mind. Hey, if your job is, uh, if your job is to be the middle man, to be the marketing director, I get that. A lot of people are busy. A lot of owners and stuff don't like messing with it. But it is nice when you get to deal with the owner because there's no mistake in what the message is supposed to be. And the message at Iger Optical, without reading this whole sheet I got here, is that they're not they're not going to deal with an insurance company. They're going to deal with you, or let you know you're not dealing with an insurance company. They're going to make sure your lenses fit. They're going to measure you multiple times, and then after you get the license, I mean the license, the gla- the lenses, they're going to measure it again and make sure the fit and the technology are perfect for you. That's Iger Optical right over there. On Highway 80 East in Pearl, Mississippi. I like it. I like hands on. I love good customer service. After being in sales for 12 years, I like being sold. I like being taken care of. My patience ran out at the end of my run selling cars. I, I, I wasn't giving good personal customer service anymore because I burnt out. But Everybody else, <laughs> there are some people who are, who were able to stick with it and constantly provide good personal service. And uh, I know Bruce and the team at Iger Optical are that place, man. Get over there, see them. Get the get the right set of glasses for yourself today. Iger Optical, located right over there, Highway 80 East, in the great town of Pearl, Mississippi. One of my favorite places, man. Uh, speaking of Pearl, real quick, uh, me and Sean got to talking so much yesterday. I did not get a chance to do it, but congratulations. To my friend and his family, Nick McClendon, the new chief of Pearl Police. The prodigal, the prodigal son returns home. Uh, the guy bleeds Pearl just like Mayor Jake does. And it is awesome to see those two longtime friends get to get the team back up and keep pushing Pearl forward. Um, Nick will do a great job. 
no doubt about it. I got to go to his his swearing in the other night, and uh, I met his mom and uh, got to meet some of his extent, you know, some more of his family. Of course, I know his great wife. We actually uh, back behind his house. They have one of the they had like an Airbnb. I don't know if they still do it, but you could rent it, and it was like a barn dominium, and it has zip lines. It's got this huge deck with like the it's got a a swing that's actually like a mattress. It's so big. It's, a, it's basically a it's basically a queen size bed. Like a big wood swing. You can just lay on that thing and chill. Got a big TV. Anyway. Nick, great people. Pearl is going to be the beneficiary of having a great guy that does constitutional policing. I think y'all appreciate that. Uh, he came over from Richland. And, you know, they did not play in Richland. Uh, you team up two, guy, two places and two, two mindsets of F around and find out. You're going to have a lot of safety going on in Pearl. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to Nick. I hope he's listening to this morning. Uh, very, very proud of you, my brother. And looking forward to seeing what you and Jake are able to do and see what you can do over there with the uh, police department. And I know. All right. Let's jump back into uh, to this real quick. We're talking about kids not being allowed to wear stay sober. And somebody just texted in, and I'm so glad they did, because I thought about this myself. Well, why don't we just send one of them kids on over there with a FIFO shirt? You know, would, would that be allowed? What kind of conversation does that create? To me, that's the kind of conversation that needs to be created. Start teaching kids at a young age. Hey, hey, you fool around. You going to find out, son. You fool around. You gone find out. Anyway, here's text message. Unknown text on the guns and gear text line. Wear certain things to school. I think I'll buy a Fafo shirt for my kid just to send a message. I've got them. Buyfafo.com. So what what about the slogan stay sober and get pulled over? Is that con is is that a confrontational? Is that is that confrontational now? So it's okay to indoctrinate our kids with Marxism, but we can't let our kids talk about staying sober this is so hypocritical all they do is preach about don't do drugs don't do all that as well as marxism (laughs) i'm bad call i usually have nothing bad to say about brandon and we pick around some of the nonsense that goes on but uh this this is a bad look. It's a, it's, a, it's you're discouraging sobriety because it could create conversation. That to take the sobriety out of it. I'm telling you the the discouraging conversation part is disturbing. Is it 1984? Is Orwell the principal over there? Is that the propaganda ministry? The ministry of propaganda? That's what these schools are turning into. It's a damn shame what this world's coming to. People like me, people like you. I tell you, I I wish I was going to the Oliver Anthony show this Saturday night out there. That song is still the best song that's come out in the last 10 years. But we got other plans. So I got two pairs of pit tickets, which is basically front row, you know, depending on where you want to stand. You got through tomorrow to win them. You go buy something on buyfafo.com and you get qualified to win. I got two pair of tickets. So four people going to get to go see Oliver Anthony, courtesy of the Clay Edwards show. Frisco says on the Guns of Gear text line, so it's okay to have boys in the girls' bathroom and stories of furries getting litter boxes provided, but someone can't wear a shirt that says stay sober. In Rankin County, supposed to be cons- the, supposedly the conservative mecca. Say it ain't so. They've opened themselves up to a crap storm here. To a crap storm. Um, Carl Ray says... What's the deal in Brandon Muddle? Brandon schools are are housed 
are, are controlled by closet Democrats. Well, that's usually the that's usually the uh, the case with a lot of these schools, man. Look, there's some great teachers out there, and look, I've caught a lot of flack over my three years of doing this because I've gone hard at teachers and kind of broke the mold a little bit for a lot, lot of y'all. You know, we were always raised that you don't question the military, you don't question police, and you don't question teachers. And and look, I support all three, but I am past that point of bootlicking and not questioning. We 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 question things now. At post 2020, hey, I was a little late waking up. I'll be the first to tell you. You know, my head was other places. But we wide awake now. <clears throat> As Jameson Haygood says, awake, not woke. We're, 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 we're wide awake. And this is just a microcosm of the of, of the thumb of con- the, the, the of the control of the thumb they have on our kids. I just think that long term it sets a terrible president to discourage a positive message. And it ain't like a questionable positive message like Black Lives Matter. You know, that's that's polarizing. Stay sober is not polarizing. It's not religious. So, you know, if you're Muslim, it shouldn't offend you. If you're Christian, it shouldn't offend you. If you're atheist, it shouldn't offend you. I mean, like, I can't think of a less offensive term than stay sober. Like, nobody should be offended by that. Somebody texted in a second ago. Let me find it real quick. Said there was more to the backstory. All right. I've been reading this in live time, so let's uh let's let's read this together. It's from an unknown texture. It says, The thing is though, Clay, what is the backstory? I went to Brandon High School at the at the point on average there were about at that point on average there were about thirty kids per class. That's one teacher to handle thirty kids and cram information into their head for an hour and a half. Pretty much anything at Brandon. That's outside of uh, the curriculum. It's it's kind of frowned upon. Okay, so anything at Brandon that's outside the curriculum is kind of frowned upon. Well, this, uh, if I'm reading that right, my, my response is this. The teacher doesn't have to say anything about this kid wearing a stay sober shirt. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's not the teacher's job to even, frankly, it's not the school's job to have any of these conversations. Not, I mean, if we're being 100% honest here, you know, obviously, again, it's a universally agreed thing that drugs are bad and kids don't need to do them. So we don't argue about kids being taught that drugs are bad. But that's not really the teacher's or the school's job. They need to be teaching a lot of different stuff than they are. But they need to be teaching math, business. We need to bring home ec back, shop class back. American history, American true, 1776 American history, and civics. And of course, if you can learn, if you, obviously you need to learn how to read. You know, if if you want to get into science and biology, I think science and biology should be electives. If you want to learn that crap, learn it. If you don't. Don't. Don't don't waste your time learning something you're literally never going to use. I turned out just fine without it. Let's take a break. Come back, land the plane for the first hour. We're going to shift gears. Y'all get ready. Top of hour two. They've taken in God we trust off the tags, and we got a whole lot of Joe Biden State of the Union drinking contests to play later. We'll be right back. Won't be staying sober. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards show. Um, I got a lot of text on this topic on the Guns and Gear text line. I'm gonna uh, we're gonna put the kibosh in it for now. Uh, very, very uh, polarizing topic. Apparently, not everybody tends to agree, but I think overall, overall, m- more people believe that the kids should be able to wear something that says "Stay Sober." 
I think that's a positive message. I mean, I'd always partake in it, but I still think it's a positive message for kids. Stay sober. Don't drink and drive. And what, if, what if they had had a shirt that said, don't drink and drive? I, I don't know. I mean, we're getting way out of hand with some of this. Way out of hand. I mean, next thing you know, there'll be a satanic statue uh, at the entrance of all schools for equality. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this top of the hour break on 103.9 FM WYAB. Unfiltered, no sugar added. Boom goes the dynamite talk radio. That was no, that was no sugar added last hour. I just want to throw that out there. No sugar added. I love those conversations like that. I love finding stuff on social media, especially hyper, hyper local stuff like that. And having that conversation on air. And I could tell that some of y'all may roll your eyes when we have these conversations, especially if it doesn't directly affect you. But let me tell you, I go back and look at the numbers on the podcast and stuff. And that stuff does better than anything else we talk about. Anything else. Hyper, hyper local. People tune in. They, they want to they want to hear about it. I mean, I, I you know, I, it ain't what I always want to do. You know, I like to hit a wider, a wider audience. But if I do a story, for example, stay sober at Brandon Middle School, or however you want to word that, or the fight out there in Brandon a few weeks ago. Stuff of that. And I'm just using Brandon as the example. Pick any local area here um, outside of Jackson. People are very interested in it. Uh, those real talk Facebook groups, those Brandon Uncensored type groups, all that stuff. That, that They're content gold <laughs> if you do this. Uh, aspiring content creators. Mine, the real talk groups for content, for social media, um, and you will have success. That is the secret to this game. And uh, if it gets hot or cold in your house and you don't want it to be, call my Pure Air, call Pure Air Consultants today. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary of delivering you exceptional heating and cooling to central Mississippi. And they want to offer you a rare gift. They're still giving away this rare gift, guys. A free labor warranty for five years. So if you're tired of uh, expensive heating, furnace repairs, or high utility bills, specialties at Pure Air Consultants include heater installation, furnace installation, heater repair, furnace repair, heating maintenance, heat pumps, heat recovery ventilators, installations, new construction builds, thermostat installation, and more. Hey, look, this is a winter ad read here, but it's clearly starting to warm up outside. I, kept, I slept with my air on 63 last night. So uh, if you're having any air conditioning issues, the same energy for air conditioning. They can take care of it at MyPureAirConsultants.com. MyPureAirConsultants.com. Ream, a new degree of comfort. I, tell you, I wouldn't want to do the work. Cause that's, a, that's another kind of hard work I, I don't want to be a part of. <laughs> crawling through attics and crawl spaces in the summer. But man, I tell you what, those guys can just about charge whatever they want. I was talking to a guy that does that kind of work, HVAC work the other day. And you know, he says he tries to keep his prices very fair. And we were talking about some of the bigger companies. Uh, I won't name any names, but we're talking about some of the bigger companies and how much they charge. He said, man, I've seen some of the, some estimates that are double what I would charge, you know, just based on what the normal rate is. And people just pay it. It's 100, 100 degrees outside, usually 150 in your house. <laughs> no wind blowing. The humidity. You'll pay whatever in the summer. I mean, if you ever – make sure I word this appropriately. You ever want You ever just want to turn me down and shake everything out of my pockets? Cut, cut my air off in the summer. I, you know, I mean, outside of something physically happening to my body, I don't know of anything I'd rather happen less. Is my air conditioning not working? And it never, without fail, 
the power will go out occasionally in the summertime. That's why I keep it so cold in my house. In case the power goes out, I want to have a stockpile of cool air in the house. So at least it may take it 10, 15 minutes longer to get unbearable. That's what I keep telling my girlfriend. She's like, why do you keep it so cold? And I'm like, well, if the power goes out, I want it to be comfortable for a little while longer. That's my plan. I'm stockpiling. You know, like we stockpile water. <laughs> I'm stockpiling cold air. All right. We, we may get back to some of this uh, this Brandon stuff. A lot of great texts. I haven't got a chance to read them all on the Guns of Your Text line, but thank you all uh, for the passion about this topic. Now, here's a topic as well that I foresee some passion in. You may have noticed your new tags. I went and got one the other day. It's t- still sitting on the front seat of my car. I got a bolt stripped out on my on my tags. I don't know what, what I'm going to do there. I guess I need to get somebody to drill it out. Anyway, I, I noticed the new tags got the magnolia leaf on it, not the state seal. I mean, that look, it's a better looking tag than the PP yellow and blue one. I, I, I don't know who approved that last one. Anyway, can we? why can't they just all be the black tag? That looks fine. But anyway, they've taken the state seal, which has in God we trust on it, off. Uh, it appears that the Marxists and the atheists ha- have won. You know, I-, I-, I guess giving them the state flag wasn't enough. Now we've had to give them Jesus too. I mean, what what else do we have to do to get these big companies to come to Mississippi? Start hanging trans flags. In our classrooms, I mean, pardon the pun, but how many more times are we gonna have to bend over to cater to these big these big conglomerates? I just, in my heart of hearts, I feel like, and I'm all for the Amazon stuff. I'm all for I don't the the. The corporate welfare to get them to come. Uh, the state funded corporate welfare. The tax incentives. Personally, Clay Edwards. It doesn't bother me. But I'm going to tell you all something that people have been right about. And whether I agree with, with the old state flag changing or not. I just, you know, admittingly, I've told you all before. I would have voted for it to, I would have voted to change it. That's just me. But I, I also have always been a little more socially liberal about certain things. I would um, accept abortion, one hundred percent pro life. Um, the gay stuff never bothered me. You know, I, when when Rush used to talk about it's a slippery slope, it's a slippery slope. Like a slippery slope to what? They're just going to get married. Leave me alone. I don't care what you do. Fast forward 10 years, 12 years. It was a slippery slope right into hanging trans flags in classrooms. Drag queen story time. All age drag shows. Slippery slope right into all that. I I haven't always been a forward thinker, but I'm going to start listening to people that are. They said the same thing about changing the state flag. All right, we'll give them this. What's next? You know, that was always my assumption on it. It was like, man, you know, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. I knew it. I just didn't know what the next mile was going to be. I'm like, ah, man, I can be for changing this, but I know once we, once we give up this fight, once we give up that, that yardage, what's left to take? What what do Mississippians hold hold true to? What is their what is next? Well, it, first and foremost, it was God. I mean, on top of all that, but it was the it was the next thing left there was of of true importance and guns. So they've removed the old state flag. 
uh, you know, against people's will over overwhelmingly. I don't know. There's still a part of me that thinks if you had put it up to a vote, it's kind of like the marijuana. I think that a lot of people are just fed up. They're just tired of fighting about it. I think a lot of people would have changed it. That's just me. I could be wrong. Just like a lot of secret Trump voters. I think there's a lot of conservatives who are, who would have said, it's, it's, we, we won. We were the last person with it. That's always my mentality anyway. But now they're taking, taking God off of, off of stuff. All right? Well, we're taking it out of school. Now we're taking it off our license plates. Where are we going to take it from next? We closed the churches during COVID. They like to pretend that ain't how that happened, but that's 100% what happened. They're like, no, they, they, they agreed to close. You forced them to. I, I'm a firm believer moving forward in the slippery slope theory. You, you, you may not agree with whatever the front line guard is. You know, if it's the Confederate flag on the state flag, if gay marriage doesn't bother you, but what's next? I don't even, uh, I guess gun control is a great example here. Well, today it's Glock triggers or whatever they're called to turn your Glock into a fully automatic. Today, today it's that. Well, I th- well, that don't bother me. That don't affect me. I don't need one of those. Well, what's next? AR-15s? Just the whole damn pistol? Healthcare expansion. Another good example. Now, I'm not smart enough to tell you how all that works. I'm not going to pretend to be. But today it's like, well, it's only this. Well, what is it tomorrow? It's only this, but this. We need to quit being progressive. We need to take that word progressive. We need to put it in a box. We need to bury it like a time capsule. And we need to regress a little bit. You know how I know... Mississippi is a in a a red state. It's a purple state. Other than real clear politics, tells you based on voting that even though we have a super red majority down at the Capitol, it's actually purple. Ashton Pittman. Well, who is he with? Mississippi Today, Mississippi Free Press, one of those liberal rags. He he had listed off some of the accomplishments down at the Capitol this session in a joyful manner. And there's not another far, there's not a further left wing nut job in media in Mississippi than Ashton Pittman. And he was listing them off excitingly, the things they've accomplished down at the Capitol. That guy should never be happy about any bill that comes out of that Capitol based on a quote-unquote super red majority. Now, that should tell you all you need to know. I preach a lot about it up here. I judge people by the enemies they keep, not the friends. Who's mad at you? Who don't like you? Your, enemy, your, your friends can be fake. Your enemies really hate you. And if he is in a good mood about what you've done, you should be ashamed of what you've done. When we come back, I'm going to read some text messages on the Guns and Gear text line. This is the Clay Edwards Show. Y'all get out to Guns and Gear, located right there, Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt, Mississippi. They are the home of No Limit Ammo, while it's still legal here in Mississippi. They're the home of No Limit Ammo. Of course, they have a wide, wide selection of guns to choose from. All the cool stuff you've seen in magazines, they've got it all there. 
You don't have to go to one of these mail order places to get it. They got it at Guns and Gear. They are the mail order place. And of course, they're way more than just a gun and ammo store. They got all your accessories. They can take care of all your Cerakoting and gunsmithing needs as well. That's Guns and Gear. Shop them online, gunsandgearms.com. Check out their Facebook page at Guns and Gear MS and see all of their specials of the day so you're not missing out on a great deal. I mean, I, I, I got a new 9mm that I got from them last year. Just one of those stupid deals of the days I could not say no to. And I'm glad I didn't. It's always better to have two pistols than one while they're still legal. Check them out. Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt right there at Yandale Road. That's guns in gear. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We're live here on 103.9 FM WYAB. Hey, guys, you're looking for a used vehicle? Don't want to break the bank? Don't want a seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollar. I got a buddy with a twelve hundred dollar truck note. I almost my knees buckled when he. T- I was walking. He told me I was, I was like, "What do you pay for this thing? Seven, eight hundred dollars a month?" He's like, twelve. I said, "God, ah, dang! I love that I, I, I love my pay for a car." Um, goodness gracious, great balls of fire! If you don't want to, you don't want to have to do all that. But get down to Mercy House. Mercy House Auto Center, right there in Crystal Springs, Mississippi. They specialize in vehicles that ten to twenty thousand dollar price range. I mean, that's the new cash car. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Ten twenty thousand dollar price range. They got financing options available for every every credit level, from from just get me done, all the way up to. Whatever best rate available is for uh, whatever prime rate is for, you know, people with seven hundred plus credit, they they got you taken care of. They do actually have some quote unquote cash cars as well, but they don't last long. Stuff under ten grand, you better hit first come first serve. But here's the great thing, man: you can check them out online, MercyHouseAutoCenter dot com, MercyHouseAutoCenter dot com. But what's great is they're a five hundred one c three charitable organization it helps fund mercy house teen adult and teen challenge which helps people get sober that's been a big topic this morning helps people get sober beat addiction and put fathers back in homes you know when you got the father in the home more times than not you you're not getting talked about on this show and great thing if you donate a vehicle to them if you got an old vehicle sitting in your yard, running or not, if you donate it, they'll come get it. All you got to do is have a clean title. You ain't got to do nothing. Make a phone call. One call, that's all. It'll be gone. And you're going to get a tax write-off for it. Because they're the only car lot around here, to my knowledge, that is also a 501 3C or C3, whatever it is, a charitable organization. So check them out online, mercyhouseautocenter.com. Whether you're buying or donating, they can do them both. Heck, they, they may buy your car, too. I'm sure they will. If you want to sell it to them, maybe they'll make you a cash offer for it. Car dealers are always looking for ways to buy cars without having to go to the auction and pay all those ridiculous auction fees. MercyHouseAutoCenter.com. All right, let's read some text messages. You guys have been you guys have been blowing them up since we uh, got on the air this morning. <laughs> I promise I try to not not read them. You know, it just uh, kind of goes down like that sometimes. Sometimes I have more to say sometimes I have more to say than I need to read sorry Sean sent me something um I just some things just don't make sense I'm gonna have a conversation with some folks one day uh you know we got so many good patriots down there at that capital all the time you know holding our politicians accountable we got some good politicians down there too let's be 100 about it but I mean, how did we? How did this slip through the cracks? I mean, I rem- I, I could be wrong, uh, but I swore I remember Tate Reeves taking a victory lap about getting in God we trust on tags. If I'm wrong, I apologize. 
I haven't sat here and fact checked this in a lot of time. But now we just got a magnolia leaf. Which, I, again, I think it looks fine. I saw some people say they hate it. I like it. I'm a less is more guy. Like, I don't like the state seal. But I would have found a way to have left in God we trust on there. Um, unknown texture. The slippery slope is exactly why I voted against changing the state flag. The social and political left is never satisfied. Your friends can be fake, but your enemies really hate you. That's fire right there, sir. Well, thank you, brother. I'm sure I stole that from somewhere. But it really resonated. I mean, it really, really did. You you can truly know more about a person by the enemies they keep than the friends. And usually, if they got good enemies... They do have good friends. I think I'm in fine company with my friends. And I might be even better, in better company with it by then. I'm, I think I got uh, Patrick Bet David he just wrote a book called uh, Pick Your, Choose Your Enemies Wisely. I think it's the name of it. I don't even need to read the book because I know exactly what he means. And I, and I and I think it's uh, y'all need to read it, you know. If if you have any hard time understanding what I'm saying here, I don't mean that to be condescending at all. And you'll understand what I'm saying. Choose your enemies wisely. You know, don't burn bridges you ain't got to either. Josh says if we can legalize weed, then maybe Mississippi can be a groundbreaker and legalize fully automatic firearms. Let freedom ring. They, well, they don't seem to be legalizing anything. They seem to be unlegalizing <laughs> as much as they humanly can. It's just every year it's something else. That's what they call lawmakers, not lawbreakers. <laughs> we need to undo some laws. I, think, I just think every year, if they're going to go down there and make 100 new laws, you need to take 100 off the books. There just need, there's needs to be a, a quota. Like a max, you can't have more than this. This is it. Something on the bottom's got to come off. There's a law for y'all to make. My good friend, Mr. Shanks, listening this morning. There's one. We're going to tap this thing out right here. This is it. I know there's more than a thousand laws on the books, but I'm going to use it for a round number. Probably like a million. We'll just go with a million. One million is all the laws y'all can have. So you're going to have to find number 800,727 and get it on out of here. Like there's some weird stuff. I mean, we'll, we can get into weird laws one day. Maybe have to do it on an uncensored show. Because there's some weird things that go on in your bedroom laws. They're like, why is that a law? <laughs> Carl Ray says on the Guns of Gear text line, I would bet what's in my bank account, which is about $150 thanks to Joe Biden, that Brandon has a rainbow flag somewhere in the school. Oh, it's probably hidden in one of the teacher's drawers. <laughs> uh, Brent. It says, three of my kids have been dress coded for wearing Virginity Rock City. For Three of my kids have been dress coded for wearing a Virginity Rocks hoodie. Removing in God we trust is about the most honest thing our government has ever done. Individually, most of us do. But collectively, we couldn't be further from operating under that statement. You know what? Mic drop. Mic drop right there. I think that may be the most poignant text we've ever gotten on this show. It's hard to argue with what Brent just said. Individually, we may trust in God. Our government could not be further from it. Listen to what they say. They're telling you. They're telling you the truth. That is no propaganda. Um, unknown texter. Who made the decision to remove the seal? I, this is just an, ex, an assumption on my end. I just saw this this morning. 
and I haven't had a time to dive into it. I woke up at 5.30. I was on my computer at my desk at 6.05, sitting there nothing but my shorts, typing out a, furiously typing out a response on Facebook about it, and I was out the door 10 minutes later. So I hadn't had time to do a whole lot of research. Let's see here. Unknown texture. I remember in the 80s wearing my last great act of defiance t-shirt to school and nobody saying a thing. There's still nothing wrong with being a moderate, Clay. No, you can be a moderate. You can be a moderate. I am probably more moderate than I've been in a long time. There's just some things I'm not moderate about. Killing babies, I'm pretty, pretty stuck on not doing that. Pretty stuck on that one. <laughs> Shout out to Shane out there delivering beer this morning. Woodrow says, I'll email, I'll email you a clip of how to fix a school issue. Less than 20-minute video. Please do. Um, Somebody sent me another text there. All right. This is a little long, but I think it's uh, worth reading. It says, transgender story time is okay, but a shirt with a positive message is wrong. I'm sure if it was a rainbow shirt that's, that – said love is love is okay i will address the size of classes i went to school in the 1980s around and 90s with 25 to 30 class sizes 25 to 30 people in classes all the way through we did just fine it has to be something else with school these days i'm sure we can name off something we'll make a comment on the tag before you get going they change them every five years why i don't know i don't agree with a lot of a lot I don't agree a lot with California but they had the best tag never change and it's simple not sure why Mississippi can't just settle on something permanent that's a great point and California does at least if it's that tag I'm thinking of they do have a great tag Florida used to have a really cool one too that kind of like had the sunset on the back of it I want to say it even had some green in it it was orange and green maybe not tacky either uh, it was maybe one of the first ones that actually had a little design to it. This stuff's gotten out of hand. I mean, I don't appre- I don't dislike the new one. I just don't like taking in God we trust off. You could easily put it around the magnolia leaf. All right, let's take a break. We're going to get into some Joe Biden stuff. I've been promising it. I know we got some political junkies out there that have probably already changed the channel because I haven't been talking politics. But here it comes up next here on the Clay Edwards Show to the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, A1 Gear and Auto, Highway 49 South in Florence. Take care of all of your automotive repair needs. Uh, I trust my kids' vehicle there. That's the best endorsement I can give a place. Trust the girlfriend's vehicle being worked on there. And, of course, my own A1 Gear and Auto, whether it's a check engine light, you need brakes, you need some work done on your motor, alternator, whatever. They got you covered. The only thing they don't do is diesel engine repair. Um, and if there's a problem that they get into and, they and you know, something that once they diagnose it, if it's something they, they don't feel like they can, they're a specialist at, like that they can't fix as good as anybody, they're going to refer you to a specialist. You know, it could be something transmission related or maybe, maybe it's a, a BMW or an Audi or something like that. You know, if it's something quick they can't take care of, they're just going to be straight up with you on the front end. And get you to somebody that can. It's like going to a general physician, physician, and they recommend you to a specialist. They'll do that. I just, I just love honesty. I love people who just cut it straight with you and tell you, "Yeah, I can do it." No, I can't. Or I just, I can do it, but the juice ain't worth the squeeze. And that Justin is going, is going to call balls and strikes down there at A One Gear and Auto, and going to get it diagnosed right the first time. When he tells you it's ready, it's going to be ready, it's going to be ready. Like death and taxes. When Justin says it's going to be ready, you can you can count on it. And uh, you ain't going to break the bank to do it. Get by there, see them, tell them I sent you. And look, as good as they are at everything else, what they specialize in, where other mechanic shops say they can't do it, they send it to A1 Gear and Auto, that's your ring and pinion. Your gears, your transfer case, your rear end, all that stuff. If you have any problems with that, there's only one call to make. That's A1 Gear and Auto. Highway 49 South, Florence, Mississippi. 
big white building, big red sign. It's right on your right if you're heading south. As soon as you get through Richland, boom, it's on the right. All right. What did I want to hit? Man, you guys have been you guys have been coming at me hard with the text. I absolutely love it. But we got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk a little bit about the Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> I should have got into all this way earlier. Days like today, I need three hours. Uh, Trump derangement syndrome at full blast. The Joe Biden State of the Union is tonight, and you know it's going to be an absolute crap show because they can't edit Joe in live time. Unless they put a hologram of some sort up there. Maybe they can bring back they bring Joe out there like the Tupac hologram from Coachella a few years ago. Um, and the mainstream media, they know it's going to be an epic debacle. I mean, Joe is, Joe is so screwed up that even his Twitter's got dementia. He posted a, a graphic promoting the State of the Union and said it was 2023. Now, look, I'm not above a typo. I, I, I get it. I'm not. But there's, but I'm not the leader of the free world. Well, neither is Joe Biden, let's be honest. But it just don't make sense. This is the guy allegedly running our country. And he, nobody fat check Kareem Jean Pierre, who actually runs all of his Twitter. She got busted the other day. She tweeted something that was supposed to be Joe Biden's Twitter on her own. Which, I mean, it's so fitting. He can't talk. She can't think. Of course she's running his Twitter. <sighs> I mean, is there, a, is there a less deserving diversity hire in the world or a better example of a diversity hire than Kareem Jean-Pierre? The White House spokesperson? Can we bring back uh, Kaylee McElhaney? Hell, even that evil lizard person, uh, the redhead, that, the ugly redhead that re- was before um, Corinne Jean-Pierre. I mean, at least she lied to you and believed her own lies. I mean, she just, just stone-faced lied to you and, and, and believe it. Anyway, Keith Oberman. So the mainstream media is preparing for this debacle. So they want you to think that that Donald Trump has a speech impediment and a speech problem, too. It's not not just Joe Biden, guys. Trump's old, too. Um, Keith Oberman, I don't have to tell you all who Keith Oberman is. You know, I know, he knows, she knows, everybody knows who this nut job is. He has decided that Trump actually has a condition called fluent aphasia. It's a, it's brain, here's what it says. It's brain trauma. Victims from what sounds, victims from what sounds like sentences, but are left word salad. They can fully use speech. They can, they can't fully use speech nor understand it. Like apparently I can't read his tweet because it makes no sense. Um, Apparently, Trump has been doing it nonstop since Saturday. Here is, here's Keith Oberman in his own words, trying to prepare y'all for, yeah, Biden's going to sound bad, but Trump sounds worse. Podcast after three days filled with unbelievable verbal mistakes in speeches and elsewhere, it appears that Donald Trump is suffering from a disease called fluent aphasia where Nikki's aphasia, in which they sound like sentences or answers to questions, but, and this is almost the literal clinical definition, they are, in fact, word salad. I find it ironic that a guy suffering from Trump derangement syndrome is speaking of something that Trump suffers from. Where Nikki's aphasia, fluent aphasia. He may also be suffering from another disease called anosognosia, in which you cannot realize nor accept the idea that you have an illness or injury. All that, plus the Supreme Court betraying America yet again, but inadvertently giving Joe Biden a kind of qualified, specific immunity in case he wants to try to overthrow an election. Please join us after the State of the Union live on YouTube. 
there's so much irony there. So, so much irony there. I, I'm so excited. Trump is going to be fact-checking Joe Biden in live time tonight. I thought it was like a watch-along, like the Manning cast is, but I think it's um, on Truth Social. But there's a great Twitter handle that I follow that reposts all of Trump's Truth Social, so you don't actually have to go. You don't actually have to go follow Truth Social. If you're listening to this, um, the name of it is I think just go type in Trump's Truths. Yeah, Truth Trump Post. Is that is the ad? It's on on X dot com. Truth Trump post at Truth Trump post, and it reposts everything immediately that Trump posts on Truth. The last thing I want is another social media app on my phone, so I'm fine with um following that on uh there. Um, here's Joe Scarborough carrying water for the Democrats. Again, they lo- a word that I had never heard until a couple of years ago is gaslighting. I still don't understand what it means. I do. I'm kidding. But uh, I know half the girls that accuse guys of, you're gaslighting me. You're gaslighting me. They don't know what gaslighting means. Is Everybody's a gaslighter and a narcissist nowadays. But these people really are. Here's Joe Scarborough. Trying to tell you that this is the best Joe Biden's ever been. And that boy, that's saying something. But comparing that guy's mental state, I've said it for years now. He's cogent. Mm -hmm. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. He's far beyond cogent. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been. Intellectually. um, Analytically. Because he's been around for 50 years. And, you know, I don't know if people know this or not. Biden used to be a hothead. (laughs) Sometimes that Irishman would get in front of the reasoning. Sometimes he would say things he didn't want to say. This is, and, and, and I don't really, you know what, I don't really care. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you, if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. Not a close second. And I've known him for years. The Brzezinski's have known him for 50 years. The best Biden ever. You know, y'all keep in mind, MSNBC is owned by Microsoft and NBC. They have FCC licenses, all sorts of stuff. They also, do I have time? I don't have time. But the, I'm making time. Break rules when necessary. This may be our last segment. But they, they won't even show the president, the soon-to-be president of the United States. This is, this is Rachel Maddow admitting that they're editing Trump. Yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> You know, it's it's it is uh, okay. I will say that it is a decision that we revisit con- constantly mm-hmm. in terms of the balance between allowing somebody to knowingly lie on your air about things they've lied about before, and you can predict they are going to lie about, and so therefore it is just it's irresponsible to allow them to do that. All right, we got to take a break. All right, guys, got about thirty seconds left. Lunch today, Martin's downtown, if you're in Jackson. Lunch today, Madison, Flowood, Brandon. Go see my folks over at Burgers, Blues, Barbecue. Today, I'm interviewing Kim Wade, live, uncensored. Check it out on my podcast later. Peace out.